Hey, Phantom Maniacs and Yo Joe! This unboxing is brought to you by Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast available the first Monday of every month wherever you find your podcast. And today we are taking a look at the once again frustratingly, ridiculously, horribly, awful, hard to find G.I. Joe Special Mission Cobra Island series. This is Firefly, my personal favorite G.I. Joe character of all time. Uh, I love Firefly, and we're going to take a look at this newest version that may not be exactly what I would have wanted, but I think once we get him out of the box and get a closer look, he could turn out to be a little more exciting than I thought. Uh, I got really lucky and was able to order Firefly on January 1st from Target.com. He was available for like a minute, and it was it was frustrating because I had to hit ship, 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 ship to get him into my cart, and then finally did, and he arrived about a week later, and I'm thrilled to have him. I love this box art on the side. It's got his drones right over here. Uh, it's got a nice uh, sort of sinister looking, almost diabolic-esque, which granted the character design lends itself to that. Uh, look here with the red night vision goggles. Uh, he, he looks like a mean motor scooter. And then on the side of the box, of course, we have his specialties, which is skulls. He hates boxes. He likes dynamite. And he likes gears so there you go and of course uh, that's my little jokey joke i do every time please visit gijoe.com to find out what these specialties actually are uh and if you haven't watched my other gi joe unboxings go do that or any of the many many toy reviews here on the needless things youtube channel but now it is time to open up firefly oh wait a minute i didn't uh, i left out our cobra island map so Awesome map of Cobra Island. I really need a poster of this, and I wish they'd do it. And as you can see, there are a couple of different spots featured here. Uh, we've got some docks, uh, and then a separate little uh, base within the island, I guess. Hasbro, please just give us a poster of this whole thing. I, I would buy that from Hasbro Pulse. Just make that happen. Oh, and this is figure 21 uh, in the G.I. Joe Classified series. All right. Let's get to it. I'm very excited to, to get this guy out and see how he really is. Uh, 1964 box cutter. Do your thing. Slice right through that tape. And by the way, I I open almost everything I get. Every once in a while, there's some packaging that I really love, and I might have to buy an extra or just, you know, it depends. But I have been saving all of these boxes, and I have them in a display uh in, in my G.I. Joe section of my toy room because I, I like these this packaging so much. All right. I, a lot of stuff with this guy. One of the trademarks, it seems, of the Special Missions Cobra Island series is that they come with a, a goodly amount of accessories, which I like. I think that makes for a good exclusive. What does not make for a good exclusive is somebody being... A must-have character, or the only version of a must-have character, or a troop builder. So, uh, obviously, Hasbro's been doing a pretty rotten job of selecting things, aside from Roadblock, uh, to be Target exclusives. All right, let's get those accessories out of the way and take a look at the man. Uh, this, my biggest issue with this from when we first saw it, and we talked about this on Audible Interlude, is this big, bulky vest. Uh... I don't, I don't love this. As a matter of fact, I think I might would even take it off if I could, if it was easy to remove. But now that I've got it in hand, uh, it doesn't seem quite as bulky as I thought it was going to be. I like the detail on it. Uh, this shoulder plate I could probably do without. I don't know. If they'd slimmed this down some, I think I'd like it more. I kind of do like the color design, the idea of him being... Because uh, if you look at the suits that, uh, like, bomb specialists or disarm... What, what the heck do you call bomb squad guys? Uh, as a matter of fact, I've even got a figure of a bomb squad G.I. Joe that has this high protective collar like this. But I, I don't know. I don't, I don't hate it, but it's not what I want Firefly to look like. And speaking of what Firefly looks like, uh, let's take a look at the detail in his face. Maybe. As you can see, he's pretty scarred up. 
Uh, looks like he's been caught in a few blasts. A lot of people don't like that. Doesn't bother me. Because uh, one, just standing on the shelf, you can barely even see it. Uh, but two, I'm okay with that. If he's experimenting with explosives and trying things out and, you know, maybe every once in a while, the stuff that he's doing in his own spare time doesn't work out quite as well as he wants. But he is a professional. And when he's on the job, uh, he gets it done like this. These scars to me are from him playing around with different explosives in his free time. It's not from messing up on the job. You know what I mean? That That's my headcanon anyway. Uh, the camo looks phenomenal. This is fantastic deco uh, on the camo portion of the figure. Uh, it's really great. And it's almost actually a shame, I think, that, you know, I would like to kind of just have the rest of this sweater. I, I would prefer something that looked more like their traditional Firefly figure. Uh, but this also maybe even takes a nod from uh, the second G.I. Joe live action movie, because if I remember correctly, his vest, and I've got the figure over there, but anyway, uh, he had a vest kind of similar to this. I, I don't hate it, but I hope we get another Firefly that looks a little more traditional. So looking at the articulation, I've gone through this on all the other releases. So you know what you're dealing with here, but we've got a butterfly joint at the shoulder, uh, nice ratcheting joints right there. He's got kind of the little kid in a, well, I don't know. His arm hangs pretty well, actually. I was about to make fun of it because my assumption was he was going to have that little kid in a snow coat effect, snow coat. Uh, but his arms hang fairly well, given how bulky that vest is. I can even really, com uh, not complain, but I can't even really give him the business for that. Uh, on the side here, you can see where the pattern's broken up. He's got some cool uh, patches of just gray. He's got the knee pads, uh, boots, uh, just full of articulation. Articulation is a place where this line is not lacking. Got that drop down hip right there. Um, I... I like this figure. I'm glad I have it. It doesn't make me angry. But again, let's uh, let's work on getting a more standard-looking Firefly out there. But he's cool. He's cool. I like him. Let's take a look at his accessories now. Uh, so we have backpack. Lots of little tools in there. Look at that. Look at the detail right there. We've got some wire snips. We've got some uh, needle-nose pliers. Uh, and then up here, we've got a wrench. I don't know why all of the tools aren't detailed. Oh, wait, I guess because those are handles. So those wouldn't have the silver coloring. And and to be honest, looking at this, I got to say that they could have just left everything black because chances are Firefly wouldn't have shiny silver tools sticking out where they could catch light and uh, draw attention. Now, on the inside here, we've got just some detailing, just some cool stuff. Where, oh, look at that. We have some little, what the heck is this thing, you think? Uh, just an explosive. Looks like it's got sort of a timer on it here. So he sticks this on the wall. But this piece sticks, look at that, right into his backpack. How cool is that? I love it. All right. And that backpack, we're going to see how well that fits on and how hard it is to keep that piece in place while we're plugging it in. Okay, so we might have a little issue here because it doesn't quite, well, it doesn't quite go snug up against his body. I wonder if that piece is going to stay put. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, we're good. We're good. I like it. Not bad. Although now looking at this, I kind of wish the backpack was the same color as the vest. Well, but he's got other black. He's got these deals. He's got some black on here, so that's okay. That works. I'm good with it. Uh, we've got a literal old school bundle of dynamite. I love this. This, to me, feels so in in uh, incongruous to GI Joe classified. Just a straight up bundle of dynamite. But it's great. I love that he has it. I don't know that it's going to fit in either one of his hands. Uh, it's not going to fit in either one of his hands. So I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with that, but I'm glad he's got it. It's fun. Uh, we've got a little drone accessory here. Uh, no articulation on this guy, but I do. Oh, wait. Yeah, wait, look. Look at that. Those legs fold up. Very nice. I wonder if there's any way to, like, perch this on his backpack or anything. Oh, and by the way. Oh, yeah, there sure is. Look at that. 
couple of slots right there. And I bet these feet slot right in. They sure do. And that can even fold up. Oh, look at what we got there. Very cool. Okay, I love that. And uh, that that's just some good design right there. Very nice. Okay, so, and he, something I failed to mention is this is the Firefly from the video game. This is what he looks like. And he's not the best character to use, but he looks awesome. And his drone is one of his special attacks. So that's cool. I like that. Looks good. You've got storage. Got some infrared goggles up there. And these are not the same goggles, surprisingly, that came with the Cobra Troopers because they have a little antenna right up here. You can see where presumably he maybe has a little voice control on the drone or something. Who knows what it is, but it's a nice detail. Let's slip right up there. And then finally, we have his gun, which I got to say, maybe a little disappointing because I would rather have some kind of green submachine gun. Uh, but that's this is what we get, is this pistol with this giant awful peg sticking off of it that I assume plugs in. Yep, there we go. So the pistol can plug in right on his backpack. Right there for storage. Uh, I'm not a fan of guns with pegs sticking out of them. It's not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, matter of fact, I, I hate them. I really absolutely hate them. So Hasbro, please stop doing that. I guess he'll just nestle uh, this like a little baby. There we go. Uh, this is not... I, I hope we get another Firefly. I know I've said that like five times now. But I do like this one. I don't I don't hate it. I think they've, there's a lot of cool design stuff here. It's something different. It's something interesting. Uh, and honestly, to me... I want G.I. Joe Classified to be different and interesting more than I want it to be completely true to the toys I had when I was a kid. Because guess what? I've got the toys I had when I was a kid. I want new, different toys. But sometimes I just don't want it to be quite this different and zany. But uh, I would, I'll tell you, I guess I would rather have this than a straight-up 6-inch version of the original Firefly as crazy as that may sound to some people. So there you go. Uh, please check out Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast, the first Monday of every month, Needless Things podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts each and every Monday. Uh, there you go. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and remember, Yo Joe!